wanted to briefly talk about uh, some of the steps I took to create the image that you see here. Uh, this is rendered in 3D Studio Max with Corona Render and it's uh, there's not a back plate here per se this is just the HDR. I'm using the um, dome feature in Corona uh, which kind of projects the HDR onto a dome with a flat bottom uh, so that it plants your CG objects into the uh, HDR. Uh, this is, let me just show you real quickly this is the original, this is the render output straight from 3D Studio Max um, and Corona and then the edited version. All I did was basically warm the colors a little bit and put uh, a bit of a glow up here uh, from the original. It's not drastically different but uh, in order to get to this point I knew using the HDR as the environment I needed some blur on it so to get there I used the path blur tool here in Photoshop uh, but what I want to do first is just go into 3D Studio Max here and I believe I left it running. Yeah, you can still see it's running here. Uh, the scene is pretty simple. Uh, I have a car sitting on a plane. You can kind of see the dome here. Um, this is uh, a shadow catcher and I prefer using kind of a cylinder shape uh, for my shadow catcher just because I get the seems softer edges of the reflections as it fades out. Um, you can do the same thing with a, a plane and um, maybe an opacity map, but I kind of just like the the rounded shape. But there's the dome, as you can see what happens here. Normally, uh, this is the HDR that I used. If you just have a typical spherical HDR, when you move around, your objects, you know, they aren't planted uh, because it's a... It, it's a, the 360 degrees of the HDR. There's not a bottom to it. It's just a round shape. Uh, the dome here kind of flattens it and gives you a, a hemispherical shape to work with, which helps plant your CG elements into the, the HDR a little bit better. Um, the method for blurring the HDR in Photoshop, as you can see, is far from perfect. Uh, I have a, some seams here. Uh, just because where the blur doesn't doesn't line up a hundred percent but if you put them out of screen you can get by you may they'll show up in the reflections at some point obviously um, but it may not be as visible as it, it wasn't really visible here I think I could see it a little bit in the side uh, on the full res render but other than that um, it wasn't too visible for me uh, but the the dome shape, uh, if you were to increase the size of this, let me just show you what these settings do. Obviously, a larger radius equals a larger dome. Um, camera height is important, uh, and these values will change on pretty much every HDR that you use because this is kind of based off the height that the camera was set up uh, that captured the HDR. You kind of want to get similar or close to the the height and it's just kind of hit and miss you since you don't know that value um, my I usually end up between 80 and like 200 uh, I don't know if that's I'm using centimeters for my unit value so I don't know if that correlates to the height that, that it was captured at or not that's just what it works out to if I go 200 you can see the the area under the the bottom of the dome gets larger so you kind of want to set that to whatever scale to match the scale of the scene I'm gonna leave it I think 120 is what I had um, so that's pretty much it for the the scene what I want to do now is I'll take another HDR I have another one that's kind of similar to this uh, and set it up show you how to set it up in Photoshop to blur it bring it in here uh, and see what we get so I'm gonna stop this and we'll go back to Photoshop uh, the HDR that I used come from hdrmaps.com this is the one that I used in the scene uh, gray autumn road uh, there's another one here that will grab uh, this golden 
Autumn Narrow Road. I think I have it already. Yeah, okay. So I will bring that one into Photoshop. And basically what I want to do is I'm going to have a start point and an end point for this blur. And I'm just going to say it's going to start here and end over here, but I'm going to keep the motion value equal on both ends so that it just blurs it evenly. Um, it's not realistic, but if otherwise you end up with half of the HDR blurred and the other half not. kind of looks weird. So to get there, I go to Blur Gallery and Path Blur. And when it comes in, you can kind of see what we're doing here. But like I said, I'm going to put the start point here, the end point at the end of this path. I'm going to put another one under it, like this. And I'm just going to try to match or get close to this shape uh, to follow that. And so I'll do the same for above it. Something like that. And since all the points are coming in over here, uh, I'm going to continue that. Put a point like this. These will go out. I'm just doing this rough, obviously. Oops, did that one backwards. You'll know when you do because you have that weird area going the wrong way, but that's that's basically what I ended up with. You can adjust the speed over here of all of these points at once, or you can come in and select each one and adjust the individual tangent speed or uh, uh, points on these tangents here. I think I'm going to set it for something like 25 percent, eh, maybe 35. Uh, and then I go to high quality and hit OK. And it doesn't take long for it to blur this. This is a, I want to think it's 4K HDR. I've got it scaled down to. Go through and save this. As an HDR or EXR, whichever. I already have one blurred, but I'll just use this one instead. Okay, go into 3D Studio Max. Go to the dome, the HDR loader here. Let's see, I believe that was 94. Yep. see what this one looks like. Uh, as you can see I have the HDR instance over here to the shadow catcher and uh, since it's environment I use the projection mode of environment projection that's going to project it onto the from this ground plane onto the geometry. So let me just start interactive mode. I just need to realign this one. Uh, as you can see, the road's going in another direction here than the previous one. Let's see what we get. Okay, need to brighten it up a little. Something like that. Maybe adjust the scale of this one. See what I was telling you about the the height of it. Height. Something like that. There you can see one of the creases that we have. Um, not sure I'll be able to, well, I might be able to get that one out. 
eh, as you can see, it's not perfect again. Um, but that's that's what I did to set up that image. Um, crazy thing, I already have a LUT uh, built in that I'm using here in, in the scene. So car paint is actually kind of green, but uh, if you turn the LUT off, it, it's a it's a crazy LUT that changes the colors drastically. And I was just, again, playing around. I thought, well, eh, that looks kind of cool. I'll just leave it at that. But that's it. That's what the way I set this scene up. If you have any questions, just let me know.